Welcome back, everybody. Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to talk about bugging out your bug out bag and the firearms that you may or may not want to take with you in a bug out situation. Of course, bugging out means you are taking your gear, you're taking your crap, whatever it might be. You got to think about extra ammo. You got to think about maybe tools and stuff and knives and everything like this Gerber strong arm that I'm a big fan of, or maybe even something a little bit more Breacher-esque, like this Double Star Wrathhawk. This thing is seen a lot, but all of it's pretty freaking cool. Anyway, you gotta think about space. You gotta think about all the other essentials that you need, might need, like water and food, or ways to tra like charge your electronics, you know, if it's not an EMP that struck you. But anyway, we're here to talk specifically about firearms that might even fit into a bag like what you see right here, the, the newer Vertex Ardennes Holiday. And I feel like we could probably do an entire bug out bag video. Let us know down in the comment section if you'd like to see that. But without further ado, let's talk about the top five firearms to utilize in a bug out bag. So number five on my list, the Foxtrot Mike FM15. Now what's unique about these rifles or pistols, whatever configuration you want to get them in, and specifically chambered in 223-556, preferably probably the 12 and a half inch barrel length on this guy. What's unique about this is it's still utilizing a direct impingement gas system, just like you find on the AR-15. However, uh, Foxtrot Mike has actually developed their own proprietary system when it comes to how this thing operates. It's really unique and it all is all self-contained. It kind of looks uh, similar to like a SIG MCX, if you would imagine, but still direct impingement, right? Now, the only problem with the FM15 and why it's number five on my list is if it's a bug out situation, I like the idea that this thing can get nice and compact. There's no need for a buffer tube and you can side fold a stock or a brace depending on however you want to have it configured, whatever. But Everything on this gun is pretty much proprietary. In other words, you're gonna have to go to the manufacturer to get a lot of the parts and pieces that you might need to maintain the firearm down the road or to cause or to you know do any type of service work on it. So that's something that's a little concerning, especially if you're thinking about, well, hey, you know what? Shit has hit the fan, bug out bag situation has started. And extra parts aren't gonna be readily available. That's where something like a mil spec might be a little bit better in this situation. So that's why the FM15 is a little bit lower on my list, but again, it is a unique firearm that I think is a lot of fun. I've, I've shot it quite a bit, or a couple of the different variations of the FM15, I've always liked them. But because, again, those proprietary parts, eh, it's number five. So with that being said, let's move on to my number four. So this next one I'm taking a little bit of a gamble on because, well, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but it is something new to the market. It's very unique and it's kind of like if the FAL got together with an AR-15 and had a child, they would have come out with the Brigade Manufacturing Mikasi. This is a pretty interesting firearm that I think I am really going to enjoy shooting. And it does take standard AR-15 magazines, chambered in 223-556, got everything pretty much I want there, short stroke piston driven design, again, side folding stock, so it can still get nice and compact. Again, everything that I think I want in a bug out bag gun, but does it have, again, those really proprietary parts and things like that? So that's something else, you know, again, why the Foxtrot Mic FM15 was number five on my list, and this is why it's number four, is again, not as much experience with it, and again, having not looked at the internals as much and knowing exactly what kind of parts and pieces it needs, I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty proprietary also, but Again, it's usefulness, overall practicality, I think is gonna be pretty far up there. Again, I'm eager to do a review on this gun. Let me know down in the comments section if that's something that you would like to see. But Mikasi ultimately standing for strong. Uh, that's why the emblem that they have on the side of this gun is a buffalo and why I'm probably gonna be picking one up to play with it because you're also talking to a big fan of the FAL. And we know that's like the best battle rifle ever. So why wouldn't this be a good bug out bag situation or firearm? I could bug out bag firearm for that situation. Anyway, let's move on to my number three pick. My number three pick, I think is probably the most practical, most available and might should be my number one pick ultimately, but it's not just because I think, well, because I think there are things better than it that exist, but it's hard to beat just a good old fashioned AK. 
especially one like my old Zastava NPAP here. This is the first AK I ever bought. Uh, it is an underfolder. So it gets nice and compact also, and the AK is known for its reliability. And because, well, these things are so dang popular, well, parts are easy to find for the most part. And let's be honest, the likelihood that this thing is going to fail you, break, something like that, not high, as long as you've got a good quality one, just to throw that out there. And we have seen, especially the, the Zastavas go for well, all sorts of rounds and everything, but there's a lot of good quality AK manufacturers out there. And again, it's hard to beat this. I mean, hell, even the Draco, if you think about it, gets nice and compact, packs a punch, but is very loud to say the least. And is something that I think uh, a lot of people might appreciate. <laughs> so there you have it. Again, just a good AK, I think is definitely one that shouldn't be slept on and Again, even if this, if I were to make this a shorter barrel, yes, NFA rules, stuff like that. But let's, let's be honest, if the world is coming to an end, are NFA rules really gonna apply still? Anyway, so maybe, you know, a shorter barrel and you know, just, a, just, a, just a little bit shorter, not, not much, but yeah, just a little bit shorter. Still need the you know, operating system to work, but a little bit shorter. I think this thing would actually be a really, really good option for your bug out bag gun. And another thing to take into consideration is there's gonna be some times where you're gonna want the firepower of this type of firearm, but you also might wanna be very discreet and go into that gray man mode that I mentioned earlier and be able to stow this in your backpack or something like that. So that way you can just look like another unarmed dude that's just trying to survive the apocalypse, right? So. Take that into consideration, and that's what I've done with my final two, so let's move on to my number two pick. For my number two pick, I decided to go with something, I guess, a little controversial. The Sig Spear LT slash Sig Rattler. Now, yes, Sig has actually released the Spear now with about a nine inch barrel that is chambered in 300 blackout, and that right there, I think, would be fantastic. <sighs> Except 300 blackout. 762 by 39 and 556, the other two cartridges mentioned in this top five video, are pretty readily available, more available than 300 blackout. And thus, because of that, I don't know if I'd really opt for it, but this 11 and a half inch 556 one, yes, absolutely. I think that's where I'd wanna be with it. That sounds great. And of course, at the end of it here, I do have the Surefire RC2, the SOCOM 556 RC2, that is a, great little silencer with the three-pronged war comp sitting right up top. So as you guys can see here, it gets nice and compact. You throw on a side folding stock or brace on this thing, again, NFA rules, uh, you will find it that, yeah, this is a nice compact option that might fit into whatever type of bag you might have fairly comfortably. Again, how necessary is that though, that the firearm fit into the actual bag if you're bugging out in this case, right? Uh, maybe you want something actually more than just 5.56 five, or 223, maybe you're uh, 300 blackout, maybe you wanna move into uh, 762 NATO per chance. I don't know, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about that, but for me, you gotta think weight. Weight is a big deal when it comes to a lot of these, and so I want something that's gonna be a little bit lighter, I can carry enough ammo of, and if you're gonna be on your feet all day, you might wanna take that into consideration. Anyway, my honorable mention here is specifically, since we're already talking about 300 Blackout, the Honey Badger by Q, because talk about a compact design. It's really neat. I mean, here's my Honey Badger on a budget. It is ultimately my Mark 18 with a 300 Blackout upper by Aero Precision. And of course the Huxworks Flow 762 Ti silencer that's newer and I absolutely love. This right here, I, I love this setup. I love this configuration. It's a lot of fun. But as far as a bug out option though, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that, but I, I don't know. With that being said, let's move into my number one pick. Now my number one pick is one that I'm actually really excited for and one that I would really like to feature on the channel. Unfortunately, I don't have it here with me, but I do have experience with this firearm or this manufacturer and that is Fold AR, Folder, if that's what you wanna call it, but no, it's Fold AR. And what's really unique about this firearm is it's ultimately the AR-15, right? So let's say Fold AR slash the AR-15, common parts. You don't have to worry so much about that. There is this military specification, mil-spec component to it that, you know, if you need to run into a gun shop to find 
spare parts or pins or keep that stuff on standby in your own bunker or whatever else it might be, that's easy enough to do. Parts are readily available is ultimately what I'm trying to get at, including magazines, including stocks, including furniture, including everything you could ever ask for, right? Well, what really is cool about the Fold AR is the fact that you can have your bug out bag, right? You can have this thing fully loaded, and then in a separate, much more compact bag that you can store off body is the Fold AR. It actually folds in two parts. It folds right at the front of the upper receiver where the barrel is, that folds one way, and then the stock actually folds another way and it takes literal seconds to deploy this thing. Now granted, the AR-15 doesn't take long to actually go ahead and get out and put together also. So if you wanted to store that, the upper and receiver separated from one another into your bag, so that way you have more room and you don't look as threatening perhaps, cool. You can do that. However, the time it takes to go into your bag, pull out the gun, put the upper and the lower together, and then get into the fight, well, that is drastically beat whenever you take a look at the Fold AR. I first met these guys a couple years ago. I can't remember if it was at SHOT Show or NRA annual meet, one of those two. And first of all, awesome dudes. Brandon, if you're watching, hello, send me a Fold AR. Uh, Coleon actually recently did a review of one, which I thought was pretty cool. So congratulations to getting that out to Coleon. Now, with all of that being said, the Fold AR comes in all sorts of different configurations as far as barrel length, as far as caliber, and so on and so forth. And whether you want a short barreled rifle or not, again, how many times I'm going to bring up the NFA, which by the way, just to go ahead and throw this out there, make sure that you are actually supporting organizations like Gun Owners of America, who are actually standing and fighting for your rights to I don't know, even repeal things like the NFA. Thank you, Gun Owners of America and Firearms Policy Coalition and so many others that are out there. You guys are awesome. So with all that being said, again, think about Fold AR being a nice compact firearm. Now here's a really cool thing about the Fold AR. They guarantee that there is no point of impact shift and that your zero will hold. It will hold your zero no matter how many times you deploy and stow the Fold AR. I think that is really freaking cool and it is something very simple to utilize. Uh, even me was able to actually kind of figure it out pretty quickly, uh, but with like everything else, train with it, practice with it. Again, I think the Fold AR number one for a reason because it ultimately is an AR-15 that just breaks down and two different parts. And instead of the gun becoming completely disassembled, all you do is snap, pull, latch, charge, shoot. Easy enough. So my number one, Fold AR. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you absolutely disagree with this list? Think it is too far-fetched? Or are you kind of intrigued about some of the firearms that we've talked about today? And for the th third, fourth time, I'll mention the Vertex Ardennes holiday bag. And would you guys like to see this loaded out? Uh, how do I like to load it out? Uh, what type of, I don't know, I think it'd be a fun video to compare maybe other bags also. And of course, yes, firearms will be included, right? So let me know down in the comment section there. A the list, do you agree with it, disagree with it? Think something should be reorganized? Let me know. And secondly, a bug out bag list and how to, well, load it out let me know. Guys, also don't forget to go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, all that type of fun stuff. And don't forget to head on over to cfcontest.com to see exactly what we've got going on over there. And while you're there, feel free to cruise the website uh, and again, see the bag, see the other things that we've talked about. I think you'll be pretty impressed because we pretty much carry all of everything that I've talked about. We are vast and that is awesome. All right, guys, I'll leave it off there. God bless and we'll see you next time at Classic Firearms.